Good morning. Thank you for joining me today. I hope your, uh, your week went well. Now as we come to the end of our week together, we're coming to chapter 49 in the book of Isaiah. Now here, at this point in the book of Isaiah, we're coming to another one of the servant songs. Remember, we saw the first servant song a while back. Now we're coming to the second one. Now, this servant song is a little bit different. It talks about the purpose of the servant from the perspective of the servant. So we're not going to spend a lot of time. We're just going to listen to these seven verses and think about what they mean for our lives. So open your ears. Join me in Isaiah 49, and we'll read verses 1 through 7 together. Listen to me, O coastlands. Give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me like a polished arrow in, my, in his quiver. He hid me away. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Holy Redeemer of Israel, sorry, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers. Kings shall see and rise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. So as we look at today's text, um, it's interesting. So it's the servant. It, there's two servants in this text, whether you catch it or not. It's, it's both the, the, the proclamation is there for both of them, but yet there's a failed servant and a servant that succeeds. Um, at least that's how people usually interpret this. So the failed servant is the servant Israel. Israel failed to keep her promises. She failed to be faithful to who God had called her to be. In fact, she failed to pro not only just be faithful in following God, she failed to proclaim the glory of God. So that's one Israel. The second, so, sorry, that's one servant. The second servant is the uh, next one who fulfills, has the same task, but where the first one labors in vain, the second one is formed with that simple purpose of um, bringing both Israel and Jacob back to God and bringing the nations into God's uh, story, into God's plan. And so this is where we see Christ at work. Christ did what Israel could not do. Does that mean that God's plan was broken? No, it doesn't at all. It means that God knew in advance that Israel would be an example to us, that we need something more than even just God's law, something more than just God revealing himself to us, and something more even than uh, a people set apart to serve him. We need God himself with us, and that's what we have in Christ. So Israel, the whole story of the Old Testament is a way. The story of Israel, um, then Judah, the story of um, them even returning from exile is a story of us, being, of us seeing how broken our hearts are and how we need someone else to pick us up and to repair us. Now the beauty of the story that we're participating in and the story that Isaiah is telling us is that that one is coming, the King Emmanuel, God with us, who is the servant of the Lord, who will um, suffer on our behalf, who is, uh, as it says, um, he's uh, I'm with a mouth like a sharp sword and the hand, shadow of his hand, he, he is hidden. Um, he is the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply absized, despised, abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers. So he's the, he is the lowly servant who is lifted up, and it says, Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. So this text invites us in to, 
the beauty of those promises and the beauty of God's plan. And it's important that in this day and age, as well as any other day and age, we recognize that this was God's plan from the beginning. That it was a plan for him to reach out to the nations through Jesus. That we who are from across the whole known world would be called together to be his people. Um, it's also good to see that there's this moment of restoration in that. And that goes on, and we could spend more time looking at that restoration, but we're not going to. This sense that Israel the failed is Israel the gathered in. That Israel the broken who didn't do the job that they were intended to do. In fact, yeah, God sends his son to rescue and redeem them. Now, it's helpful for you and me, Christian, because we have days where we don't succeed the task that God has given us either. We might even have weeks and months and years. But still in the midst of that, God is doing this wonderful work in our lives. And that wonderful work is rooted in Christ and in his ability to redeem us and to redeem that brokenness. And to bring out of that brokenness new life, to breathe hope into the embers and bring to flame the faith in our hearts. So today, as you read this text, um, go ahead, read as much of Isaiah 49 as you like. We looked at Isaiah 49, 1 through 7. Read the whole thing if you want. And uh, think about um, the servant, the servant of the king who gave himself, that you and I could be called um, one of the king's courts. I hope that you have a, a beautiful day and a wonderful weekend. Thank you for joining me. Oh, we're going to pray. Let's do that. Father, we thank you for today and we thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that um, you would guide us today in all that we do. I'm meeting with my uh, presbytery today and I pray, Father, that you would bless all these pastors and elders from churches across Canada as we gather together to pray and to reflect on what's going on in the world around us and in Canada around us. And uh, Father, we pray for humility, we pray for patience, we pray for wisdom and grace. Father, I pray for those that we know who are hurting and those who are battling with um, real challenging problems, be they mental health or physical health. We pray for those that we know and love that are in the hospital, asking that you would comfort them. And I pray for each person who's joining me here today. May your spirit be their comfort and their strength. May you use them and lift them up in the same way that you lift Christ up, that they may draw all men to you. And Father, we pray that um, we would be examples of the love of Christ in this broken world, not because of how good we are, but because how beautiful Christ is in us. We ask all that in his name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye-bye.